Nonetheless, a notion of group selection has come back into thinking, but it occurs only under a couple of specialized circumstances. The version that we just trashed, which was the version Marlon Perkins. Okay, how many of you guys know who Marlon Perkins was? It's come to that. Marlon Perkins, how many of you guys know what, does Mutual of Omaha, does that still exist? Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom? Is that still a television program? Yes, no, when you were young? Did that exist? Okay, is it still sponsored by Mutual of Omaha? They still do. That's great. Okay, because they've been that one has been going for decades and decades. And you know, it was always, you know, they'd have they they'd somehow always have to segue the Mutual of Omaha in there during the commercials building and it like, you know, just as rhinos will mate on for hours on end, you want fire insurance for your home or some such thing. But in its original couple of decades, it was hosted by a guy named Marlon Perkins. And Marlon Perkins taught most of America their evolutionary biology. Marlon Perkins is the guy who taught everybody behaving for the good of the species and that sort of thing. The first version of group selection that got trashed in the 60s was Marlon Perkins group selection. The group selection that's sneaking back into the field is very different. Two different versions. First one, something you will get in various populations. You've got a population of something or others, and some biogeographic event occurs, which causes a subset of them to get isolated from everybody else. A land bridge disappears, or somebody drops a lake there, or who knows what. But something isolates a small subset of the population. So these guys go about reproducing by their standards, and these guys go about reproducing by their standards. And what's going to be a characteristic very soon of the smaller population, they're going to be more inbred than this population, simply because they're smaller. They're going to have a higher degree of relatedness among individuals. So now we throw our second piece of our three building blocks, throw in kin selection, and what that immediately predicts is levels of cooperation will be higher in this group than in this group because the higher degree of relatedness. That's great. And that's great because once we see how sort of cooperative systems have a larger payoff, you will get a crystallization so that everybody, the second or third cousins, are eventually going to have to be just as cooperative as the siblings are with each other. You are going to fix a trait of cooperation in that population at a high rate. So notice here, in this case, we have a high degree of cooperation driven by kin selection, whereas these guys are going about their usual savage at each other's throats business. A biogeographic event reverses, and these guys get reincorporated into the main population, and they're so different by then that they get a different color. And what you've got then is here in the large population, here is a nucleus of animals who are cooperating. And here is the huge unwashed mass of the ones who are not. And everything we know about reciprocal altruism, all of that means that these guys are going to start outcompeting these guys. And the model that is used is cooperation will have to crystallize outward. Animals will have to join in in these cooperative patterns because these guys will outcompete them. What do we have? This is called a founder effect. This is a small population that, thanks to being inbred, has fixated some trait that's advantageous, where the evolution here moves faster than in here because of the smaller population with the inbreeding. Some adaptive trait comes in there. They get reinduced into the main population, and this founder-driven trait quickly spreads throughout the population. And what you get here is if the same thing is occurring in the realm of behavior, reciprocal cooperative behavior, somewhere in here you have a transition from this being a kin selection phenomenon to this being a reciprocal altruism phenomenon. So that stands as one of the models out there for how do you jumpstart cooperation in non-relative populations. You use inbred founder populations to drive it there. And just to have a metaphor, all you need to do, think about in some city, there's some occupation, some mercantile, something or other, that there's a gazillion of them and all sorts of people work in that. And there's a subgroup of people there who work in this who are all related. And as a result, they do something cooperative and kin selective. They make 
low interest loans to each other. And as a result, they're more successful at business. And they get incorporated into here. And what you then have is this economic force that everybody else has to join in to this cooperative business of trusting each other or low interest loans or I trust you like a sibling. You don't have to pay me as well next week. It used to be that only siblings trusted each other like siblings, but a force there for more cooperation, a driving force of inbred kin selection initially. So that's one way in which people are thinking about group selection. And here you now have this group out competing this because of this trait. And people actually use terms like crystallization, the trait of cooperation will crystallize outward and fix in the whole population. So that's one version of it. And this is one, again, we will come back to, this is one of the ways to jumpstart cooperation in a world in which there is no reciprocal altruism. Because you see the problem with that. We all have learned tit for tat is the best one, except forgiving tit for tat might be better, except Pavlov might even be better. And all of those are built around this one requirement, though, which is somebody has to make the first move of being cooperative. That's got to jumpstart the system. And what we all know is, in a system that doesn't go along with the rules of can't we all sing kumbaya, what happens is the first one in the first round who does something cooperative is some schmuck who's one step behind everybody else for the rest of time. There's no way to get these cooperative systems to evolve initially. We'll see there are ways. And this is one of those, have it driven initially by kin selection, and then throw it into the general population. So that's one version of where group selection has crept back in.